Some time ago on this channel, we took a look at memory leaks. Now, I wasn't too happy with that particular video seeing as that it was a little bit oversimplified, the analogy was a little bit faulty, and the sound quality wasn't great. Of course, having said that, the sound quality of this video isn't going to be great either because someone's drilling and hammering right out there, as you can hear right now. But hopefully I'll try to clean it up as best as I can and we will try and power through. But yes, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at memory leaks. We're going to try and understand what is happening and why it's happening. All this and more after the break. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. So, we're going to talk about memory leaks today. Let's very quickly look at the definition of the term. Memory, of course, refers to the RAM available on your computer. Whereas leak implies that memory is somehow lost or destroyed. Now, right off the bat, I do want to mention that memory leaks are not permanent. You don't actually lose RAM forever. I mean, there is really no way for that to happen unless you physically remove a stick of RAM from your computer. So even if the name implies otherwise, a memory leak does not refer to any physical defect. There is nothing physically wrong. It's all in software and there is no permanent damage. So having said that, let us now take the first step to try and identify what a memory leak looks like. In fact, the first symptom is computer slowness. Your computer could just become less responsive or, you know, just be entirely stuck. However, that's not enough to tell us that a memory leak is indeed happening. However, we do have the tools available to help us take a better look at the situation. In fact, if you hold down Control shift escape on your keyboard, you will open the Task Manager. If you pop over to the Processes tab, you will see how much memory each running process is actually taking. The reason why we are looking at memory is of course, well, a memory leak is concerned with memory. If you find a program that is taking up a lot of memory, then it's possible that that particular program has a memory leak. Having said that, we still don't know if it's actually leaking memory or if it actually needs all that memory. Now, this is the part where more explanation into what a memory leak actually is, is required. Now, in order to answer this question, we need to better understand what memory is and what it's used for. So let's move on to take a look at that. Essentially, you have RAM on your computer, and as you know, RAM is essentially just a small amount of memory, well, relatively small amount of memory, that can be accessed very quickly. The role of RAM, which is more important in this particular context, is that RAM is where running applications actually temporarily store data. Let's say I have my web browser open. Now, there's a lot of temporary information here that is actually saved to RAM. This includes what tabs I have open, how much I've scrolled to in individual pages, my page history, you know, to facilitate the back button. All of this stuff is stored in RAM. In other words, every single program actually has some amount of information associated with its state, and that is actually stored in RAM. This means all programs take up a certain amount of memory, and that's all well and good. On a more technical level, essentially what happens is a program will request the system for some memory. The system will then allocate this memory to the program and a program can use it. While that's all well and good, this of course leads to one little problem. And that is, well, memory is a finite resource. Eventually, if you have enough running programs or just your programs all take up a lot of memory, ultimately, you're gonna run out. Now, what happens when your system runs out of memory? Well, a process called swapping happens, in which parts of RAM is actually saved onto your hard disk to free up space in RAM. I'm not going to talk too much about this because we've talked about this before in a previous video. If you're interested to find out about that, you can click on the annotation link that I've put on screen. The key point I'm trying to bring across is that you can actually run out of memory. The reason why I bring this up is to link this back to what I mentioned earlier. Chances are, if your system is running slow and you see a program that's taking up a lot of RAM, then there's a possibility that that particular program is causing your system to run out of memory. So we understand that part, but where do the memory leaks come in? Now, when a program takes up a lot of RAM, 
There are only two reasons why this is so. First, the program actually needs all this RAM to do its computation. An example of this would be a program that maybe is working with video. Video files are of course huge, and loading it into RAM means taking out a lot of RAM. So that's fine. But the second reason is the more sinister one. The program is requesting for memory, the program is allocated this memory, but it's not really using it. That is a memory leak. You see, when programs actually request for memory, when they're done using it, the proper practice is to return this memory. This of course means that the memory becomes free again and can be used by the other processors that actually need it. However, one common cause of memory leaks is when programs request for memory, use it, and then don't return it. Now this probably comes from a programming oversight, but it could actually be worse. Let's say now I've actually requested for a chunk of memory, and let's say I have the variable x, which serves to point me towards the location of this memory. Perhaps somewhere along the line in my computation, I accidentally overwrite the value of x. What this means is that memory is still allocated to me, but in the future when I go to x, it no longer points me to it. As a result, I cannot even say I want to return that particular bit of memory because I don't have any information to tell me where that memory is. This of course is a memory leak at its finest because, well, it is really lost in a way that is difficult to recover. This could actually lead to a memory leak that is pretty difficult to resolve. Let's say now a program has actually lost memory in such a manner, and then the program finishes running. You close it, and basically you're done working with it. But that memory is still locked away, with no possible chance of recovery. At least at face value, that is the true definition of memory that has leaked out of the system, because there's no way you can get it back. No programs can actually use that memory, because it is marked as in use by a particular application, despite the fact that that particular application isn't even running. This then leads us to the question of how we can resolve this. Now, in the worst case, when memory is actually allocated and then lost, certain programming languages actually implement a feature called garbage collection that is aimed at basically trying to recover these. Instead of trusting the programmer to actually remember you know, all the locations of memory that has been allocated, the programming language does it for you. When garbage collection runs, it will look for memory that is not in use and actually release it back to the system. As a result, there is a lower likelihood of memory leaks actually happening. In fact, if you are running software that is prone to memory leaks, chances are closing it will force garbage collection to run, and as a result, memory that is released will be actually returned. This allows you to actually retrieve the leaked memory. In my personal experience, Firefox is an application that, you know, is quite prone to a memory leak. After having it open for several hours, it can easily take upwards of 1GB of RAM. However, if you actually restart the application, you come back up with a lot less. That shows that a large amount of memory has been allocated when the application doesn't really need that much all the time. This is one classic example of a memory leak. Now, let's say you've encountered the worst of the worst situations, and that is a memory leak that cannot be recovered actually happens. What do you do then to actually, you know, get that memory back? Well, a system restart will do the trick. You see, when you restart your computer, essentially it's throwing everything out and starting from scratch. This means that, well, your RAM gets emptied out, and as your system reboots, things get put back there. As a result, any parts of RAM that were locked away by non-existent applications are now freed by the restart. This is one of the many reasons why doing restarts from time to time is actually pretty useful to your computer. By starting from a fresh slate, chances are there are less things that actually hang around and just slow your computer down. And there you have it, that's it. We've explored the concept of memory, we've taken a look at what a memory leak actually is, and we've taken a look at some possible solutions to resolve this. Well, that's all there is for this particular Random Wednesday video. I hope you learned something today, but until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Hello, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. 
If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe. For more updates outside of YouTube, do follow my official Twitter account at 0612TV. And if you'd like to see more of my work, you can also check out my About Me page. Once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612TV.